joined a new company named Stripe and it has been over a month now. Uh, I am really enjoying my time at Stripe so far and they have actually sent me an onboarding kit. Uh, let me show you what all this is. First thing first, uh, they have given me a, a t-shirt and also a nice hoodie. In the onboarding kit, they also have given a laptop bag. Let's see what's inside the bag. Inside the bag, there is a book called as the Dream Machine. It's basically about uh, the evolution of computers over time. Um, and also they have given a, a notebook to take down notes. And also there is a Stripe sticker. Um, I really love, you know, stickers on my laptop. So I'm very excited to, you know, put this on my laptop. And also they have given a nice uh, uh, welcome note. Um, I am really happy that uh, Stripe has provided all these things. It will be really useful to me. Stripe provides payment infrastructure to the internet. It's used by companies of all sizes from startups to Fortune 500 to process their payments like credit cards, debit cards, bank transfers, etc. Technically, payment processing is not that complicated, but it's a highly regulated industry and for a good reason, because it is dealing with consumers' money. Um, to understand why a business has to use Stripe, let's first understand the life cycle of a credit card transaction. Firstly, let's understand the players involved in a credit card transaction. Let's say we plan to open a small online store where we want to sell our merch and customers buy our merch through our website. Before we accept online payments, we need to have an acquiring bank. Acquiring bank is a bank where our money will be deposited when customers buy merch from our store. Let's say our acquiring bank is the Bank of America. Our next player is an issuing bank. Issuing bank is the bank that issues a credit card to the customer. For example, if the customer has a Chase credit card, then the issuing bank is Chase. Then we have the card networks. Card networks are responsible for talking with the issuing bank. Visa, MasterCard, Amex and Discover are among the most popular card networks. Since there are multiple card networks, acquiring bank talks with the payment processor like Chase Payment Tech that in turn talks with the correct card network based on the customer's credit card. Now let's see the credit card lifecycle. Customer buys a product using a credit card from our website. Our website contacts the acquiring bank with the card details. Acquiring bank now talks with the payment processor and reaches the correct credit card network based on the customer's credit card. The card network checks with the issuing bank to see if the customer has credit balance to buy the product or not. Once the check passes, our website will get a response. The issuing bank then settles the money into our bank account in 3-5 to five business days. The customer pays the credit card bill to the issuing bank at the end of the month. Isn't it surprising to see that so many steps are involved in something which we do almost daily? Since our website deals with credit card data, our website needs to be PCI compliant. PCI stands for Payment Card Industry and is a set of rules all payment businesses has to abide by to protect their customer credit card data. PCI can be very challenging for a small business because it contains over 1800 pages of documentations and it takes 72 hours to just read through it. Um, a small business would require a significant workforce to make their website PCI compliant. Let's say that we plan to expand our merch store to India. We have to do this entire process from scratch. We need an Indian acquiring bank and we have to provide lengthy documentation to the banks to sufficiently prove that our business is legit and we are not laundering money to drug cartels like in Ozarks. Where's my money? We have to do the same process for every country we plan to expand. And as you can see, how time consuming and complex this is for a small business. Let's see how Stripe can help our small business. All we have to do is connect our bank account to Stripe. Our website will directly talk with Stripe and Stripe will wire our money at regular intervals. Since Stripe stores credit cards, our website need not be PCI compliant as Stripe is already PCI compliant. Stripe is present in 47 countries and expanding our business to these countries will be as easy as flipping the switch. Stripe also provides a no-code checkout page where small companies can integrate pretty quickly. This checkout page provides address autocomplete, supports multiple devices and provides around 135 currencies and different payment options. Businesses can also customize 
their branding with very minimum effort in one. Even big companies with a lot of workforce power like Amazon and Google use Stripe for their payment processing. These companies just don't want to deal with the regulatory aspect of the payment industry which makes Stripe as their number one choice. Stripe also provides payment infrastructure to the gig economy industries. The gig economy is really booming right now and it includes food delivery apps like DoorDash, Uber Eats and Swiggy in India. These companies need to support multi-party payments. If you have used apps like DoorDash in the US, you have actually used Stripe indirectly. As a customer, when you order food through DoorDash, you directly pay it to the DoorDash. Then DoorDash has to pay the food cost to the restaurant and they also need to pay the delivery charge to the driver and also take a small processing fee. With Stripe Connect, you can do this multi-party payments very seamlessly with very minimal work. Stripe Connect can also be used for other gig use cases like Uber, Lyft and Shopify where multi-party payments are required. Meet Chris, this is my manager, um, uh, he works at Stripe. So um, uh, Chris, uh, please introduce about, about yourself and where are you from? Yes. Um... Yeah, as as uh, several of them said, I'm Chris. I am an engineering manager at Stripe. I live in Brooklyn, New York right now. Uh, prior to this, I had lived in the Bay Area for eight years about, uh, but I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. And uh, uh, Chris, I know that uh, even you joined Stripe like a couple of months back um, and you are also very new to Stripe. So how was your onboarding experience? Yeah, started January, sneaking up on my four month anniversary here. My onboarding experience was fantastic. I think I had very high expectations and they were met and in many ways uh, exceeded. Stripe does a great job of giving context to the breadth of Stripe's business, which is very large. We have many products, 15, maybe more products, I don't know. Um, and so spending the first week learning about the company, all parts of the company, I mean, everything from external communication to pricing strategies to all sorts of things uh, was a great experience. I met in the first month, 14, 15, maybe more people for one-on-ones, just trying to ramp up myself and learn about the different teams and all the context of the projects I'm working on. And in every single case, people were more than happy. You know, it wasn't just a, oh, somebody's onboarding, like, yeah, it's useful for me to talk to them, but it was really just excitement to meet somebody new and help them uh, get spun up on strike. So it's been a, it's been a really Really, really great experience. And, uh, on that note, I I think Stripe's onboarding, and I feel the same way about the interview process, reflects the culture very well. Mm-hmm. It's very accurate yeah. to the culture. Um, I think the thing that I love most about Stripe is the there's this balance of kindness and rigor of the people who work here. It's a very um, deeply intellectual group of people that, that we come to work with every day. Somebody on Twitter um, notably called us a bunch of Hermione Grangers. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Um, but I think that comes through in the interview process. It definitely comes through in onboarding. People very kind, very happy to help, understanding there's, there really are no stupid questions, um, but also diving really, really deep and meeting with subject matter, matter experts all across the company. And I, that was something that I, I liked. I mean, I was attracted to Stripe's culture in the first place, so I kind of hoped that would be true. But knowing that it's tightly integrated into the company and it really is reflective of the culture that we want to build sets all employees off um, with kind of like the right expectations and the right framework of how to approach working in strike. Yeah. Our team is geographically spread, right? I mean, there are two people in New York, including you, and there are two people in Seattle, including me, and there's one person in uh, San Francisco. How do you feel managing a team which is so geographically spread? Yeah, it's a good question and something I know a lot of companies have grappled with as uh, as the pandemic reaches year three. I think one benefit to joining Stripe now is that the company has operated default remote for a number of years now. Um, so I think that's that's been a big benefit that a lot of the processes in that transition that I think was rocky at some companies, a lot of those have been worked out. 
Given where we are now, teams operate default remote in almost every case. Um, there are some weird cases that have to do with regulatory things where that can't be the case, but um, but broadly speaking, teams operate remotely. I think the collaborative nature of Stripe makes it much easier. It's something that, you know, is very hard culturally in transferring to remote first companies yeah. that it's hard to build that communication and it's hard to build that trust with people that you don't see in person um, regularly or even ever and stripe has done a great job culturally of making that um, the case thanks for asking uh, you know answering those questions chris um, it really helps a lot and yeah i'm looking forward to work, working with you Stripe's mission is to increase the GDP of the internet. What does this even mean? Is this an another corporate buzzword? Let me explain. In 2022, online sales will be just 21% of the worldwide sale of products. This number will only increase in the coming years. Every business now wants an online presence and this has been increasing in the recent years because of the onset of COVID. Stripe wants to make payment processing so simple that any small or large company can just rely on it for payment infrastructure. Stripe's mission is to become the AWS for payments. A decade back, no company was even considering the option of using cloud services. Every company was maintaining their own servers, which was such a burdensome task. But now, no company even considers managing their own servers, and they just blindly use cloud providers like Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud. Likewise, Stripe wants to be the household name for the payment processing in the coming years. Stripe wants to empower businesses to sell more products online and not to worry about the dirty details of the payment industry, and hence, increasing the GDP of the internet collectively. Thank you all for showing so much love for all our videos. And our goal is to reach 1000 subscribers soon. So if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe right now. And uh, once again, we will see you in our next video. Bye. Bye.